Hey everybody and welcome back to Bottomless Coffee with Jerome. Today we are going to talk about housing, but not policy. Specifically, we're going to talk about how to buy some housing. Buying a home is one of the best things that you can do for your financial well-being, but it's not as easy to do now as it used to be. So we are going to have a conversation with loan officer Torben Berndt about everything we need to know and everything that we need to do in order to buy a home. Welcome, Torben. How's it going? Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Yay. Uh, well. yeah. Good, 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 good. <laughs> I'm um, also really happy that we're able to have this conversation. As we mentioned in the green room, the show is sponsored by the Department of Health. And so everything needs to have some kind of relation to COVID-19. And uh, as we can all recall, housing prices really spiked during the COVID-19 pandemic because people were moving away from the cities into rural areas. And that kind of exacerbated this problem of housing affordability. Um, and so when I was traveling and talking with my friends, they were like, I'm never gonna own a, own a home. I'm never gonna like have access to this thing. And I'm like, well, how are you gonna, how are you gonna retire? <laughs> are you gonna make money? So that's yeah, the context. <laughs> absolutely. So, I mean, what I'm kind of hearing from this is like the, the hopelessness of like, I'm never yes. gonna own a home. Yes. And I feel like that's a very, like I'm a millennial. I think you're a millennial. Um, Elder geriatric millennial. Okay. Okay. Call me. <laughs> All right. Well, you're still you're still there. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I think we tend to have because we we've grown up in a time where we've seen a lot of wild stuff like the COVID nineteen pandemic, and we know that like the wage gap has only risen since the eighties. We've been talking about that for years, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like we tend to have that kind of hopeless attitude about buying a home. And like, I'm not here to lie to you. Like, yes, it's hard to buy a home, and it hasn't gotten easier over time necessarily. Yes, there's always more and more programs. Um, but I'm just here because I want to, I want people to know that it is possible. And, hmm. you know, it, there's a lot of people who I think maybe are in a position where they could buy a home now and maybe just don't even know it yeah. because they sort of have that millennial attitude. Yeah. On the other hand, I think, you know, it is hard to buy a home, but if you start to line up your steps early and make plans and align everything to get to that goal, get the right people in your corner, like, it can be realistic for a lot of people. Okay, well, we're going to unpack everything <laughs> about that. Okay. Absolutely. we got plenty of lot, time. Yeah. So you are in this industry, uh, and you're a piece of the puzzle that you need to put together in order to buy a home. Um, and you are, so you're a loan officer. Mm -hmm. well, what does that mean? Yeah, for sure. So I am licensed by the state of Minnesota uh, to, the technical term is, originate home loans for people. Okay. So um, I can only originate in Minnesota. Some loan officers can, can work in more states. Um, my plan actually for now is to only be licensed in Minnesota okay. just because, uh, you know, I think it's good to have a specialty and I think if I know the products in this state, like the back of my hand, um, it, there's an advantage there. You know, I don't want to spread myself too thin. Yeah. But I partner up with your realtor and work on the financing side. So while your realtor is um, the one who's out shopping with you and structuring your offer to offer on a home, uh, I'm the one who's helping you secure the loan or the financing uh, to get into the house. So when you're buying a home, it's really those two parties that are like the professionals you're working with. It's your mortgage loan officer and your realtor. There's also a third party, your title company. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, but uh, I would say like normally people just work with their uh, like realtors or loan officers recommendation for title. So it's not quite as important to like shop in my opinion. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. um, and you are part of a brokerage. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Absolutely. So I'm with First Equity Mortgage. Uh, we are, there's actually only six of us loan officers, eight employees, eight people total, um, two administrative people. Uh, so we're pretty small, but what, what being a broker means is that, uh, you know, versus when you work with a bank or credit union, you're sort of held to like the rates, the interest rates and the products like the home loan programs that they offer in house, if that okay. makes sense. Okay. As a broker, I play sort of like a middle role where I'm able to shop out your loan from many different lenders. Oh. So of course I'm biased as a broker, right? But like I can confidently say that like there's a lot of situations where I have more options or programs or can get a loan done that some traditional mortgage lenders cannot. Um, okay, well, let me ask you a question. You, you're in um, an organization with multiple loan officers. Yes. So am I supposed to just call you directly or do I call the brokerage and then someone routes me 
to like the right person for my circumstances? Ooh, good question. Um, I would say either works, right? Like if you reached out to First Equity as a company, um, you can reach out to any of us individually based on fit. Um, I also think that there's something to be said for like a personal referral. Mm -hmm. So if someone gives you my name or someone else's name, it's hopefully if you trust them, like it's because they've worked with them in the past, they know they're good for the loan. Um, yeah, so of course people are welcome to um, to email me directly um, or yeah. go on the company's website and reach out. So uh, trust, I think, is a big part of the relationship <laughs> because um, the the process uh, that you are very much involved in is, you know, I don't want the first time I bought a house. I was like, "This you asking me a lot of questions. <laughs> you want to know yeah. all about my finances. You yep. want like." two years of tax returns and stuff. And um, you know, I'm more responsible now than I was then, but I was like, <laughs> I don't know where my tax returns are. Sure, know, yep. I got my check and that's in the bank, but you want all the documents yeah. and stuff. Um, and so how do you kind of go about establishing trust with people who are calling in, you know, like what's your, what's your vibe? You've obviously got a good one, so. <laughs> appreciate that, appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, first, I wanted to speak to um, this, uh, to pull back from one of your other yeah. questions, uh, which is I think the the personal aspect of it and the mm -hmm. financial aspect of it is really personal. So like the whole millennial mindset of like thinking that it's never gonna happen, I feel like that sort of plays into it too, you know? Mm. I have to go and talk to someone about my income and my credit card debt. Like so many of us have shame, you know, associated yeah. with stuff like that. Legit. So absolutely it can be, um, you know, a big leap to talk to a professional in that way. Um, I would say like for myself, my style is very approachable. And so I am very much going to have a conversation. I literally call it like an initial conversation with someone. It's just a conversation. There's no expectation to fill out an application for pre-approval or anything like that. Oh. We're all coming into this like we don't learn this stuff in school, you know? So yeah. it's like and then you can read online yourself. But at the end of the day, like the best thing you can do is talk to a professional um, who's going to break this stuff down for you and like. I'm not here to judge people, right? Like, if I can't offer you a home loan right now, I'm going to sit with you in this meeting and we're going to talk about what are potential steps oh, to fantastic. get you to that point, right? Yes. So have a conversation with a realtor or a loan officer, even if you don't want to buy for a year and a half or two years. Like, get yourself set up for that, you know? Yeah. How did you, like, get into this <laughs> world? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, no, I think that's really important to talk about because I feel like, um, as like a queer young person, um, a lot of the times, or just a young person in general, right? Like moving into some sort of career. Um, I think it's tough to identify how people that you look up to got to where they are, mm. sort of. So I think that's a, I really appreciate that question. Um, so for me, I, I went to college at the U of M. Um, I think, you guys, I think for me, what I've realized in the last couple of years is, like, mentorship is the biggest thing. Yeah. So if you see someone that is doing what you're doing, that you, like, see someone that's doing what you want to do where you see yourself in five years, sit down with that person or someone like them and literally, like, ha like figure out how they got there. Because, like, my first job out of college was a personal connection, someone that I knew through college, got an interview, it was a good fit. I worked for a financial planner for three years. Oh. Um, yeah, yep. And through that process, I was pretty close to my boss where like I could be honest and tell her like, you know, I don't think that my future, I was her operations person. Okay. So I wasn't like a licensed financial planner, but I knew that that wasn't necessarily the route that I wanted to go. And I was honest with her about that. Yeah. She was super cool about it. So about two years into that job, I started doing informational interviews with, yeah, with, and I know you hear that, right? Like career coaches in high school are like do informational interviews, but I did it. And yeah. I like, I did it for a year. I probably did 10 total. So not a ton, Sure. but I chatted with a realtor, a loan officer. Um, it was like different real estate positions. And then I also chatted with, um, I was an urban studies major in college. Okay. So I'm really interested in like the urban landscape and like city planning and like ethical development. So hmm. I sat down with like a couple of people who worked for the city of Minneapolis and just like really hashed out, like, got a feel for what their journey was like, what their path was like. Yeah. I know it sounds like a lot, but it got me to where well, I am, you it know? It sounds very similar to what I do. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, so so literally, like, the owner of my company at First Equity right now, um, I met him through a networking connection 
through my old job. Okay. And it was like at the end of the refinance boom where he could afford to hire someone. Mm. Um, and it was, so it was luck, a little bit of luck, definitely like, <laughs> definitely work, right? Yeah. Is that, yeah, <laughs> that's there, my two cents I would say. Is there a strong like queer presence in this industry or do you Ooh. see yourself represented in the industry? Absolutely, so that's been, um, I'm, I'm three years licensed now. Um, I've originated, I believe, 65 loans. Okay. So it's been, yeah, it's been a journey of figuring that out. And um, I'm really lucky that I get to work with uh, a handful of incredible LGBT realtors. Mm. And probably, I don't know, maybe half my clients are LGBT too. Um, but it's, yeah, I think, I think it comes back to the trust and the approachability of the industry. You know, if you have someone that's in the LGBT community that's helping you, they get sort of those nuances, I feel like, that come with our yeah. identities. I can see that. I can see that. And that, I don't want, it's, it's interesting because you've got to be personable. But it's, you're, it's very structured, like the process of, like, like going through the loan process. Like, like, we can be friends, we can sip coffee, we can do these things, but like, we're not gonna get through this process unless we have like, this, that, and also the other, Yeah, you know? And so how are you like balancing your friendly relationship mm -hmm. versus the professional requirements? And then, um, I'm, I, I apologize for always asking you like six questions at one time. No, it's good. <laughs> uh, but then like, you, you might have to deliver some bad news to people mm. who think they also have their things together. Sure. And you've got this friendly relationship and yep. so. Yeah, so like for example, for example, if I have an initial conversation with someone, and by the end of the meeting, we sort of established, well, you know, I might not, be, I can't get a loan done for you right now, but here's what you can do. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like, I'm a professional, so that's what the relationship is, but like, I can help open doors by making it more approachable and like friendly. And then to speak to, uh, yeah, having to give people bad news. I mean, I just, I try to put a positive spin on it because like, yeah, I'm a millennial, I can acknowledge that it's hard to buy a house, but at the same time, like, this is what I do, so I have the tools necessary to get you there mm -hmm. if you're willing to work with me and make the step, you know, take the steps. And that's what's tricky about it is, like, for example, credit takes time. Yep. So if, you know, if yep. someone, if I can't quite get a loan done because of where your credit is at, like, it might be a few months, it might be a year, right? So it takes some diligence. Yeah. Um, and I'm here to coach you along and be a cheerleader, you know? Given um, the, that rise in prices mm -hmm. that we chatted about, um, are you finding yourself having to give more bad news Ooh. lately? Or are people just become, coming in more prepared? Or maybe they're coming in um, partnered, you know? I, it, I feel like I can't specifically answer that. Um, the one thing it makes me think of is uh, there's a lot of sellers potential sellers that own a house right now mm -hmm. that are not moving because they have that low interest rate that they secured during the pandemic. Yeah. So one of our biggest issues in real estate right now is inventory, right? Which, um, which means like the amount of houses available. Um, so I would say that is definitely a challenge in that yeah. for my shoppers that are out there right now, um, there's not a ton of houses to choose from. And you, you like first time home buyers. Of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I work with everyone. Like, of course I work with people who I literally just had a lady close. Who, this is wild, but it was her 17th house. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, like I hope has, I don't move she, that many she times. She has 17. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, she's, oh. that's how many times she's bought and sold. Wow. Isn't that wild? I know. Interesting. Uh, no, I, I love working with first time home buyers and I think it's a skill set of mine. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I will work with anyone, you know? Even, like, I work with some, like, small-time investors, meaning they maybe own a couple duplexes and the house they live in. Um, so, yeah, everything from first-time homebuyers to veterans, um, happy to work with. So one of the things about, and I just want to make sure that we, like, center the affordability piece. Yeah. Um, one of the things about being a first-time homebuyer is that there are more options available. Um, and I don't know if this is still the case, because it's been a while since I was a first-time homebuyer. Mm -hmm. But there was an FHA program that only required maybe 5% down, is that still around? So FHA loans, the minimum down payment is actually 3.5%. Oh, even better. Yeah, yup. And I actually have a couple, I just picked up another one, 0% um, down FHA products. What? Yeah, so there's, there's some 0% down loans out there. 
Uh, down payment assistance is out there, you guys. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing that I like to speak on, especially in my first conversation with first time buyers, is down payment is for a lot of us. Like I'm a recent first time home buyer, and down payment was my the biggest hardship for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of us are in sort of in that situation. Um, the tricky thing with down payment assistance is my advice would be like not all down payment assistance products are the same. They're not all built the same. So make sure that you're really talking through with your loan officer, like what each individual program means and mm. what it means for your future. Because a lot of these programs will actually add a second lien or a second mortgage to your home. Sure. Um, and which is fine, right? I have clients that use these products all the time. But the, the caveat with some of them is that um, you actually have to pay that second lien back someday. Mm -hmm. So my advice is, oh my gosh, please take advantage of down payment assistance. There's incredible programs out there. Just make sure that you're learning the differences between different types of programs because there is risk associated sometimes. Now, would for a down payment assistance program, because it, we'd, we'd be, this is a, a puzzle we're putting together. I keep yeah. using the word puzzle. Um, you could get a down payment assistance program and couple that with a, could you, with a yeah. no down payment required totally. loan? There's absolutely programs that can be stacked. I've probably, the most I've stacked is three on a loan, which is, oh my gosh. Those are, yeah, those are doozies. Yeah, <laughs> but we do yeah. them, right? We gotta, we gotta get people their money. It's hand um, cramps. Into the, yeah, yeah, no, it's, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely, they're stackable. Not all programs are stackable with each other. So that's sort of where um, my skill set and, right. yeah, like it's what I do. So that's, you know, we can figure out sort of what the best situation is. Um, and some of those, I don't wanna scare people away from second lien down payment assistance. That's oh, not sure. why I say that. Um, you know, you just, you want to know what you're getting into. And um, and some of the programs are, like, for example, they give you that chunk of down payment assistance up front, mm -hmm. but then they fully forgive it after five years. So, like, oh. that's a great deal to me, right? Yes. And so I'll sort of talk you through yes. um, the caveats and the different the differences between the programs. Okay. And are, you, are, they, are they still doing adjustable rate mortgages? Good question. I hope not. So, I, don't, I don't know. I'm scarred yeah, from those. No, that's, that's, such a, <laughs> that's such a good question. And I, I have clients bring it up because... Honestly, I haven't sold, I haven't done a ton of adjustable rate mortgages in my career so far. Good. Not because I think that in certain situations, like I have done one where it was like the only option for this particular person, oh. which was a great option then, right? Okay, okay. Um, and adjustable rate mortgages historically have been really good tools. So like, for example, if a family knows that they're only going to live in a city for three years, say they're in the military, sure. say they have jobs that move around, it actually could be a super valid option because back in the day you could actually get like really good rates yeah. on adjustable rate mortgages. I'll say since the pandemic, honestly, the rates just haven't been there. So yeah. I like I'll pres I'll I, I like will present it as an option, but I'm like it's not even worth like I'll tell you what the rates are, and you're like, okay, why would we even why would <laughs> yeah, we yeah, even yeah, consider yeah. that? Um, so yeah, it, yeah, they they exist. Companies are still offering them, but they're not super viable at this moment in time. Okay. What? What? I'm. Oh, I should explain the difference, oh, huh? Please. <laughs> okay. For the people who don't know. So, fixed rate mortgages. Oh, um, sure. Yeah. So, your interest rate on a fixed rate mortgage is going to be the same for the entire life of your loan, meaning your payment and interest rate will never change until you refinance or sell. With an adjustable rate mortgage, um, there are like rate changes built into the structure of your loan. So depending on what your adjustable rate mortgage looks like, your rate could change after one year or a number of years, yes. uh, if that makes sense. So, Thank you for that. And <laughs> we should, I really want to just hammer home the fact that with a fixed rate mortgage, when you buy your home, you're not paying rent, you're paying your mortgage and your rent... It's no, longer, it's no longer a thing. So if you're in a place where your rent is always going up, you should really look into the possibility of buying a home because then like, the, your income over time will increase while your cost of living will remain relatively flat. 100%. And I think, I like to think of, okay, so a conversation that I have with a lot of first-time buyers is, especially right now where rates are a little higher than they were a couple of years ago, there's definitely situations where your mortgage payment is going to be a little higher than the rent you've been paying. Sure. 
And that's tricky, but at the same time, you have to view it that way. If I have to adjust my life ever so slightly now yeah. in order to have that fixed monthly housing payment in yes. the future that's not rising over time, that's a really good mentality. Like, think about what your rent will be in 30 years, right. even if it just increases by $50 a month every year. Like, that's absolutely. Think about five day. years down the line. Get a spreadsheet. Do the math. And the other thing <laughs> is, I was just thinking about this earlier, like, yeah. Thinking of buying a home as like a type of savings account. Mm -hmm. Because as you're making your monthly payment, which you have to pay for your housing anyways, might as well make it towards your own equity and not your landlord's. Yes. And in the future, once you've lived in that house a couple, few years, and as you're making your monthly payment, your equity is going up. When I say equity, it's like the portion of the house that you own. So if you're putting, like another example is if you're putting 10% down initially, Right off the bat, when you close, 10% of that house is yours, 90% is the lenders, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean when I say equity. But when you've lived in that house 5, 10, 15 years, you have a lot of equity in your house yes. by making your monthly payment. And over time, property, like, property values tend to go up over yep. time, right? Historically. So that equity that you have in your house is literally like your savings. There you and go. you can pull that equity out eventually. Yes. And you can do whatever you want with that equity because it's your it's your savings, essentially. <laughs> there we go. There we go. We are going to take a quick coffee break, but we're going to talk more with Torben about the process of getting your first home or second or whatever. Okay. You're right back. Welcome back. You are watching Bottomless Coffee with Jerome. We are having a fascinating conversation with Torben Burnt. Um, Burnt or Brent? Uh, it's actually burnt, but burnt is great too. Burnt. <laughs> I got, the, I got a, my my German parents are in my ear. Like, get the pronunciation. Right. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah I appreciate that. Um, okay, so now we're gonna talk about the actual nitty gritty. Like, how do people prepare for buying a home? Um, what do we need to do? Yeah, for sure. So uh, that answer is really long. Great. <laughs> but, yeah. I'll get comfortable. Uh, okay. Perfect. No. <laughs> Um, I would say, so the biggest things that I'm looking at when I'm like evaluating your application is how do your monthly debts or liabilities compare with your monthly income? So when I, when I'm saying monthly debts, I'm looking at your projected housing payment, um, things like credit card minimums, car payments, student loan payments. I'm not looking at debts like utilities or mm -hmm. like you know other payments in your life um, it's more things that would show up on credit uh, so I would say yeah so income compared with liabilities and then credit is okay. the other big pillar um, so it's so, like your history of paying your debts on yep, absolutely maybe. yes if you know that you have a little medical collection from a few years back even if it's just a $200 thing mm. but you know it's there take care of that in advance of applying for a mortgage. Okay. Or if I'm doing an application with you and I see something like that come up on your credit port report, I'll show that to you and be like, hey, like yeah. you might, you might want to consider paying this off um, because you'd be surprised. Like even a small collection like that is, is tugging down your credit over time sort of yeah. and preventing you from boosting it even if you have like good credit habits, for example. And so you, could, you might still qualify for a loan in general, if you have uh, a mark on your credit, but your interest rate would be higher. Depending. Uh, but when your interest rate is higher, that increases the, your monthly payment. And yep. so you might, be put, you might no longer qualify for the loan on that particular house because your income won't, won't be where it needs to be. But if you fixed your credit, like if you adjusted that the $200 like black mark or whatever, sure. you might qualify for a lower interest rate and then that house might be achievable. For example. Yes. Yup. Yeah. It's, As a maybe. Right. It's sort of, it's hard to speak to specifics because it's like, there's a lot of moving parts that I'm looking at and it's like mm. how they fit together. Um, and the other big pillar, so I mentioned uh, income, liabilities, credit. The other big pillar is assets. Oh, sure. So, and when I say assets, like what, what can you, how much money, if any, do you have ready to go towards this home purchase for down payment and closing costs? Yeah. Um, of course, there's down payment assistance out there. 
Um, but I always tell people, like, if you can come to me with, like, a few grand, that I can do so much with that. I absolutely have products where you can do 0% down and maybe even get some closing costs covered, stuff like that. Um, but if you can if you can come up with a little something, like, that'll help a lot. Yeah, um, it's like five. Yeah, I, right, as, as a number. I mean, sure. any, any number helps. Any number right? helps. But, yeah. but that's kind of my, I'm like, yeah, if you can come to me with a few grand, right, like five grand, um, that'll help so much in getting you into something. And we can sort of play with the numbers like, um, you know, putting this $1,000 towards your down payment and closing costs versus using that to pay down one of your debts in order to raise your debt to income ratio and be able to raise your purchase power a little. Oh, there you go. So that's like that's sort of where my expertise comes into is like helping you get all those puzzle pieces yeah. um, in place. So ideally, if you're in a headspace where you're like, in, within the next few years, I definitely want to buy a house, you'd want to start paying off your credit card if you could because that's debt with it's a okay. high APR. Really. It's okay if you have some debts, you guys. Like, yeah. I have student loans. I have a little credit card debt. I was still able to buy a house in October. Like, it's that's kind of my point with all of this is, like, chat with professionals because yeah. you don't necessarily know, like, um, until you talk to someone and have them crunch your numbers, you know? And I regularly have conversations where I'm like, okay, like, you know, we could get a loan done here. Here's what it would look like. Mm -hmm. But it might actually be in your best interest to get that credit score up 10 more points or raise three more thousand dollars or wait until your tax return comes back because I yeah. know you're expecting a chunk of money. Yeah. So I can kind of work with you like that too um, and advise you. So, um, I think I'm also hearing on the opposite end, since you're looking at car payments, student loans, what have you, probably don't go buy a new car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, that's a big one, yep. So when I have someone pre-approved and I'm sending their them their pre-approval uh, letter that's always part of the conversation you know don't make any big purchases prior to closing um it can kind of depend on your borrower profile so mm -hmm. like on how your numbers fit together um but i would say like if you're pre-approved don't make any like big financial decisions without consulting your people and yeah. by your people, I mean your loan officer who has your pre approval. <laughs> that's um, just very strong. That's advice. good. Yeah, that's just strong advice. <laughs> yeah. Um, listen, there's, I thankfully, thankfully, knock on wood, <laughs> um, I've never had, you know, I've never had a client buy a car where then like the loan fell through before closing. Yeah. But I have talked to loan officers that have, you know, so I mean, that it's also like making sure that we're making sure our clients know you know, the right steps to take and not to take. <laughs> so, okay, you're, you're getting ready. You've started to get your stuff in order. Like, you've got to start finding your team yeah. for advice. Um, how, did, how did you go about finding your Ooh. professionals when you um, were getting your home? For sure. So my situation was a little bit unique because the realtor actually represented both me and the seller. Oh, okay. It's called dual representation. Um, in that case, uh, how did I meet her? <laughs> she, uh, she's a lovely realtor. Um, I met her actually by doing her home loan. Hmm. Um, and then we've worked together a couple times since. I guess my advice when it comes to like choosing your team, do it early and scope it out a little. Like make sure that you're comfortable in a conversational sense <laughs> with, mm -hmm. too, like with your realtor, for example, because you're going to be spending a lot of time with this person yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, shopping for homes, you know? So make sure that you're, yeah, that you get along. You, you, um, you feel taken care of by them. You feel like their process is clear. Um, uh, what else? But yeah. I feel like you have to really, it's similar to working with a loan officer. I feel like my loan officer and my realtor exchange my information and like have a very clear, almost transparent relationship. Absolutely. So you should really trust your realtor to the same extent that you trust your loan officer. Oh my gosh, absolutely, right. And I think there's something to be said too with like, uh, you know, getting personal referrals from people that, yeah. um, like I always joke, like everyone has a cousin that's a realtor. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and I think it's true, like everyone, everyone has- But a... are they a good realtor? <laughs> yeah, well, right, it's like, it's like, I'm super happy to work with your cousin who's the realtor, but like, scope them out a little. <laughs> like, yeah. read a couple reviews. Maybe talk to like another family member that's actually worked with them before. And the same goes for, yeah, just any pro professional referral. I feel like, like, 
<laughs> right? Yeah, it's just a, a good practice is make sure that when you're getting a referral from someone, they've actually worked with them before, they know their process. Um, yeah, find someone you respect. It's, doing, it's almost like mentorship. Find someone who's done it before, see if they've had a good experience, use their referrals if you're able to. Absolutely, and trust your instincts, you know? Oh, for like sure. Like your feelings about people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, nitty gritty time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I think, Do it. I, I think a lot of people um, can't find like just straight up how do I apply for this loan what does this like uh, mm -hmm. actual home buying process look like so like you mentioned a pre-approval letter yeah so I'm gonna I'm gonna let's okay let's pretend I, <laughs> I'm a first time home oh buyer. god are we gonna role play yeah <laughs> just a little, just a little bit. <laughs> hey, you didn't tell me where was like, sure. <laughs> underwriting <laughs> <laughs> okay, but um, you know, I've watched the first part of this conversation. I've I've started paying down my credit card bills. I don't have any student loans. I've um, started preparing for a down payment. Sure. Um, I feel like the first thing I would do is get a pre-approval letter. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. And just one note on on what you just said too, like yeah. that you absolutely can have student loans. Yeah, you know, in your debts and still still potentially be able to um, uh, get a home. And actually, one note on student loan debt. Um, the guidelines for various loan types have actually gotten more lenient in the past couple of years too over time. Uh, so it's even if you have like, I know I have some friends that have like 100K in student debt, mm -hmm. but say their income based monthly payment is 100 bucks a month. Yeah. I can actually use that 100 bucks as your like, like uh, debt basically. So like, you yeah. Know, does that kind of make sense? So I don't yeah. want people to think that like an exorbitant amount of student loans is going to stop them from necessarily buying a home. For You're almost preparing like a budget for them. Like this is how much you bring in. This is how much goes out. This is how much totally. you have available for. We'll through that. Yes. Absolutely. Is that, do you use that for the pre-approval letter? Um, as in like going through the process and sort of talking through. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my process is this. We have an initial conversation and sort of at that meeting, we can decide together if like an application for pre-approval makes sense right away. Okay. And we can just knock it out on the spot or schedule it for later. Um, once I have your application on file, obviously we've had sort of a, you know, a detailed conversation there, sharing a lot of information. You can get all your questions answered. Um, but if I'm able to pre-approve you on the spot, I will issue that pre-approval letter. At that point, you are welcome to shop with your realtor. Um, so I'm sort of here, you know, in the background as a support, like I'm happy to, uh, for example, like I have clients reach out to me and be like, Torben, like, you know, the property taxes are a little bit high on this property. Can you, can you go ahead and run new monthly payments for us? Yeah. At, you know, while they're in, in considering offering on a home. So I'm sort of here in the background to support both them and their realtor, of course. Um, and then as soon as they find a home that they want to offer on, the realtor or the client reaches out to me. And I provide actually a property specific approval letter. Yeah. This is really important because the seller wants to see that your financing as the buyer is good to go. Yeah. And that you're good for it and that you're working with, you know, don't just take my word for it, right? Ask your realtor, but it can be really important to like have a local loan officer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Cause like, you know, if your loan officer is in Washington state, you know, and maybe it's a newer relationship. Are they even available on Fridays and Saturdays? Like, oh, sure. do they understand the nuances of local markets? If that kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, I just want to point out um, the reason I say get the pre-approval letter before you go out shopping for a house is because you won't go out. <laughs> you'll find a house that you love. And then you'll go to your loan officer and they'll be like, oh, actually, you can't afford that house. Such a good point. <laughs> Such a good point. Guys, and you know what? Your realtor hopefully is going to tell you the same thing, right? right? Like, chat with a loan officer, secure that pre-approval before we're going to go out shopping. Yeah. And it, I think it's the best practice for <laughs> yeah. for everyone. Uh, you know, um, know what you can afford. Don't get yourself excited about something, right? Yes. That's kind of yes. what you're getting at. Um, yep. Okay, so they, you, you do everything in the right order. Yes, okay. So you're pre-approved oh, now. Okay. I mean Huzzah, we're pre-approved. <laughs> yes, and you're out shopping, right? Yes. I'm here to support. You find that home. I provide the property-specific approval letter. Um, I typically will, I'll work with your realtor on process and figure out like what everyone's preferences are, but I'll always offer to have your realtor CC me on the offer email when they're submitting your offer. And then, um, you know, I 
know how competitive the market is. <laughs> so, uh, you know, whether it's 7 p.m. on a Friday or 4 p.m. on a Sunday, <laughs> like, I'll see that email and I'll pick up the phone and I'll call the listing agent. So yeah. the, real, the realtor that's representing the sellers of the home you're offering on. I'll call that individual, introduce myself. You know, maybe they've even heard about my company before because mm. we've been around for a while um, and we're good at what we do. Um, just build some rapport. You know, of course, I'm not sharing any details about my clients. That's, you know, there's client confidentiality, but it's just to build some rapport and trust there. Um, and you know what? If there's, it, I don't want this to scare people, but sometimes there's homes where there's like eight offers on yeah. the same home. Yeah. So every little thing that I, as your loan officer and your realtor can do to make your offer the one that's accepted, of course, we're going to try to do. So that phone call is sort of just like putting the bow on the present, right? Like, yeah. like um, and, and say there's eight offers on a house. If only two loan officers representing their buyers called the listing agent to introduce ourselves, that right there is going to, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that you can imagine the seller's agent might say to the seller, like, Hey, like, you know, this client's, this client's loan officer, like, I know they're going to be good for it. Agreed. Um, that's, that's a, that's a really great point I hadn't considered because I've mostly have done, been on the buying side rather sure. than the selling side. But when you're selling your home, you're still making those monthly payments on, on your mortgage. Um, the house is probably empty, uh, no tenants in there or anything. Uh, and so you want to know that the person buying is not wasting your time because it takes 30, 60 or 90 days after you sign the purchase agreement to actually close on that loan and get the house. Absolutely. So that's like th- up to three months of me paying a mortgage on a house I may or may not be living in or like uh, may, may or may not be collecting rent on. For sure. And like my my number one job I, is to, like one of my number one jobs is to produce a good pre-approval. Yeah. Right? And so, yeah, like the listing agent wants to know. And I'm going to be honest with you, like I'm three years into my career, so I'm... I'm like just kind of building, building an end for yeah, being good at what I do. But I have a couple of coworkers, my mentors who have been doing this for over a decade. And I legitimately had to, I'm not saying that the offers got accepted because of this, but I had a couple conversations with listing agents like this last year where I would call and they'd be like, oh, I work with so-and-so literally all the time. And I know he's, I know he's good for it. So like, there's already some rapport and trust there too. Yeah. Um, and I think that goes back to working with a local reputable lender. Okay, so the offer is accepted because because I've done my my work and I've got my my financial yes. affairs oh, in order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <The> <laughs> process, okay. So okay. Um, we get a pre-approval letter. I get a realtor. We find a house that's in my price range. We execute a purchase agreement, mm-hmm. and then it's either that thirty, sixty, <laughs> or ninety days. Yes, and I actually don't know what's going on. Totally behind the scenes. Yeah, absolutely. During that time. So once you've offered on a house and gotten your offer accepted. That's when, uh, you know, the client and I will get back together and really dive into the loan process. So um, I'll collect the remainder of your documents. Um, as a broker, I'm one of the first things that I'm doing is I'm shopping out your loan. So it, sometimes I have clients where, like, you know, I already know what program we're going to use. We've talked about it, so I might already know what lender we're going with. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's all about getting the most competitive rate, right? Yeah. So I'm going to shop out lenders, figure out what lender we're working with, um, and then I'll send out your loan disclosures. Uh, we'll, usually the beginning of the loan process is um, uh, more laborious and eventful um, for you as the, bu- as the buyer. Um, and then a lot of it is just me giving you little updates here and there and doing my thing and getting yeah. your loan done. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's, you know, an underwriting process. <laughs> <laughs> Safe word. <laughs> Safe word. <laughs> no. Um, uh, and yeah, I, I work through what they're called conditions. So I work, I work through the loan basically, and I'm giving you little updates here and there. So there might be, you know, a couple of like an inspection involved things like an appraisal that. an appraisal inspection exactly um and yeah typically i would say uh 30 days is like pretty pretty run of the mill like when you go under contract and get the offer accepted all the way to closing okay um but i mean there's that's been like since the pandemic as it's been so competitive the expectation for me as a loan officer has gotten shorter and shorter uh-huh. of how quickly oh. i want to get a loan done interesting so I, I might have a realtor being like torrent like they're, you know, they're, they're, they might accept our offer if we can get it done in 14 days. And I'm like, wow, we can do it. <laughs> like, like, it's going to be tight. <laughs> but, but I've done it and, uh, you know, it's doable. Uh, so, um, so then we get to close it. Yes. 
um, with your title agency or, or whomever, mm -hmm. um, I used when I used to practice law down in Georgia, I was a closing attorney. Oh, awesome. So you had to be an attorney down there. And Got I it. was like, uh, but I would just be at the very end. So I was right. like, I have all of this paperwork. Now Did I need to make sure. Like the title exam and everything? You were, mm -mm. You were we, closing we, attorney. Exactly. Right, so cool. Exactly. Um, and so how was, how was the closing process for you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my closings are always celebrations. There you go. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's literally the best part. Like, you get to go and, uh, you know, there's a little stack of papers. Um, I attend every closing I possibly can. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, of course, um, the client's realtor is there, too, uh, you know, most of the time. And, um, yeah, you sign your papers and get to, you know, sometimes you get the keys right at the, right at the closing. Yeah. And it, it's, it's exciting. A lot of times people did what's called their final walkthrough right before. Um, yeah, it's a it's a joy of a day. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that is the process, <laughs> literally from start to finish. <laughs> I have a couple side notes there, but <laughs> they were good side yeah. notes. Um, I'm gonna say if you've got other questions regarding this process, you should call Torben. <laughs> no, I'm happy to help for real. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. just a conversation. <laughs> One hundred yeah. percent. Um, and this is the right kind of professional that you should be talking to when you really do have those questions and you're serious about moving forward and buying a home. Cool. Awesome. Okay, well let's take a quick coffee break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, you're watching Bottomless Coffee with Jerome and we are rounding out our conversation with Torben and say your last name properly. Bernd. Bernd. <laughs> <laughs> um, as is our tradition, we want to close things out, uh, letting you hold the mic for just a little mm. bit. So what is one message that you want to make sure that people take away from our conversation today? Concise message. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of concise. Uh, no, I just, I guess I want to pull it back to, like, the fear of it. Like, a lot of us are, uh, yeah, like, we just, right, millennial mindset of, like, we're never going to buy a house, stuff like that. Have a conversation with some professionals. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that can tell you that you know, that can actually give you some real guidance. Um, yeah. You may be surprised what you find out. Yeah. Never is a, a really long time. It might just be like a year or two. <laughs> yeah, know? right. And like, I think a lot of people will like do Google searching and or get overwhelmed by like all the media negativity surrounding yes. home purchasing. But you never know until you talk to someone like what you actually might qualify for or how quickly you could get there. 100% agree. That's my biggest takeaway, I would say. It's a it's a really great one. And I think it's also, I, um, I almost feel as though sometimes, like, if I'm on, if I'm on Zillow, <laughs> searching, <laughs> looking at these houses. I use it too. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, in bed, <laughs> snacking too much. Um, I'm like, I want this house. And then I kind of work backwards. And I'm like, well, what do I need to do? like income wise and professionally, career wise to get there. Mm -hmm. Like have I why have I been making the same amount of money for so long when like housing prices are going through the roof? I'm like maybe I need a raise. You know? Or maybe <laughs> I need to change my career up. Maybe I need to do something to keep up with where the market is. Um, and that's not necessarily like the conversation you'd be having with someone who came to you. Um, but you can give like an accurate assessment of where people are financially. Uh, and, you know, maybe it's where they need to be financially in order to get to where they want to be professionally. Yeah, so I have to be a little bit careful uh, yeah. with how much I advise people financially because I'm not a licensed financial planner. I'm literally, literally walked away from that as a career. Yeah, right. Yes. No, I'm just, so <laughs> what I can kind of guide people on is like, what would your mortgage look like if these hypotheticals were true, right? Like, I can speak to the mortgage itself. Um, I also feel like you're getting at, uh, like, income types or, like, mm -hmm. how – no? Like, how – I wasn't necessarily, okay. but we can we're, – we're free to go there. Yeah, well, no, I guess that's just, like, another – it comes down to, like, chatting with someone because there's – like, self-employed income or part-time income just has different rules to, like, full-time income, for example. So some of that information, I feel like – is just so helpful as a starting point too. Like there's a lot of self-employed people who are concerned that they, you know, can't buy a house and it can be trickier just because, um, you know, as a self-employed person. So the uh, tricky is not impossible. No, exactly. And again, it just comes back to the same point. Like talk to someone, yeah, figure out what it could look like. But it could be, it, it could be impossible without the help of a professional. Oh my gosh, please lean on us. <laughs> 
please. But it's, it goes for me in other areas of my life too. Like, yeah. uh, I've, you know, through my career, I've learned how much there is to learn about, for example, homeowner's insurance. Oh, sure. <laughs> so like back in the day, I, I thought, oh, it's just a car policy, right? Like you get a couple quotes and you get well, the cheapest one and no. No. <laughs> like they, yeah. So like even with my clients, when I'm advising them to go, like t when you're picking an insurance agent, don't necessarily just go with the right? That's one of the steps during the loan. I need my yeah. clients to come up with a homeowner's insurance policy, right? I'm like, find a professional that you trust, that you're sitting down with and talking to. Yeah. Um, but we don't know those things. We're, we yeah. didn't learn about homeowner's insurance in school, right? Same goes for mortgages. You get the idea. What I like about this conversation <laughs> is that, um, especially in that last message, is that I think a lot of us get caught up like admiring the problem. You know, I'm like, oh, it's impossible for because of the recession, because of the pandemic, because of all of these things. Um, and we're, we're really caught up in like why it can't happen instead of spending that same energy looking at what we can do to make it happen. Uh, and I appreciate that that's the vibe you really bring. You know? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Let's get everyone in houses. Let's do it. <laughs> everyone in houses. You heard it here first. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tori. Thank you for this was so amazing. Um, I need you to look at that camera okay. and give your name, uh, phone number, and email. Got you. Uh, hi, I'm Torben Baird. I'm with First Equity Mortgage. Uh, my phone number is going to be my cell, 612-272-1839. You can reach me at that or my work number. And my email is Torben, T-O-R-B-E-N, at F as in Frank, E, M as in Mary, O-R-T. Torben at femort.com. Uh, last note on that, hmm. um, one of the founders of our company was like, she loved that first equity mortgage was fem. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I yeah, it. yeah. So that's, that's our legacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good call out. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I hope you found it helpful. I think I certainly did. Um, as always, you can stream all of our episodes at bottomlesscoffeeshow.com. See you next time. Huzzah! Hey! Crushed it. Mm. Okay. <laughs>